Hello, hello. You're listening to Profoundish. My name is Alex Duquette, as always, and I'm going to be joined by my co-host Weston in a little bit. And I came in wanting this episode to be like the texting episode. We talk about kind of phones and just texting etiquette. And we did talk about that, but we also go on to talk about a movie from our childhoods called An American Tale, Beverly Cleary Books, and Cards Against Humanity. I don't know. I guess we had a lot to talk about this episode, but we do circle it back around at the end where I quiz Weston on some texting trivia. How does he do? I don't know, but I hope he does well because if he doesn't do well, his phone might explode. This is Profoundish. I was just saying, I can't imagine calling anyone seriously Papa, but when I think Papa, I think uh, Fievel goes west, or, or Fievel comes to America, or the Fievel movies, where uh, Fievel calls his dad Papa, and there's that scene, uh, yeah, Fievel, the little mouse, that animated movie, there was like three of them, came oh, out in like the that. 90s. Oh, Fievel, yeah, yeah, okay. I, Fievel goes west, I always remember, but I don't remember what the one, the one that's Fievel comes to America or whatever that one is. It's the first one. Uh, maybe that is goes west. I don't think so because there's one where he goes to the Wild West. Anyway, he comes to the to America for the first time and he gets like separated from his family and it's like the first time they're like getting reunited and he's like running in slow mo, mo towards his dad. His dad's running towards him and Fievel's just like Papa and his dad's like Fievel, <laughs> Papa, Fievel. You know, you know what's funny? You completely like unlocked a memory for me <laughs> with this. It, in general, I've seen at least one of these when I was a kid. Um, I my when I first saw it, I just looked it up. I thought immediately thought, oh Disney, but it's not. It's, it's Steven not. Spielberg. Yeah, it's like um, it's one of those rando because everyone knows Disney. It's one of those rando animated movies. Yeah, but it, it's funny if you look it up. The animation looks so Disney, and I I'm sure they were capitalizing on that, but. Uh, it, it's weird, like maybe art style, maybe, but actually the way like movement works, I don't know. There's something about it that's not as like bubbly, Disney. not as. I see what you're saying because it's not. It's not like I don't the know, animation. Don yeah, because I can't. I can't really remember. Yeah, the movement or anything. It's been literally probably over twenty years. But I'm just saying, like, I feel like this character, like the drawing itself, looks that looks pretty Disney esque. But it, the, the animation, I'm assuming. Well, I'm sure is is different. I mean, it's Spielberg. I'm sure he didn't want to just copycat by any means. I was just called. He's an got American more integrity tale. than that. Integrity. Integrity. Um, did you? This is totally random, um, and not the topic of the podcast at all. But did, when you were a kid, were you familiar with the Beverly Cleary books? Beverly, I'm literally looking it up. It kind of sounds like it's f- like familiar, but I don't think I read any of them. I think that's just a name I've heard. No, I didn't read these. I think I okay, may have so the- seen their book covers somewhere and never picked them up. Look up, I guess while you're there, type in Mouse and the Motorcycle. <laughs> Wait, I might know that one. Mouse and the Motorcycle. That sounds vaguely familiar. Mouse that was my favorite Beverly Cleary book. I don't know if that ever was a movie or not, but I know it was a book. No, I, I there's don't, different covers too, but there might be. I it's the covers not. I don't think. I don't think I know this one, but I think okay, I've seen okay. some of these. Um, you probably have. So Beverly Cleary, I think a lot of these books were written kind of a little bit before we were like born. Like I think a lot of these were like seventies and eighties books but they were republished a lot in the 90s. So um, my mom, I think, was a fan, or she introduced them to me. That's all I know. But I know there were some in the library, too, that I also read. Anyway, I read a bunch of her books. You might be familiar with, like, Ramona, at least the name, like Ramona and Bigsby, or Rigsby, or that's the dog's I'm, name. I don't know. There's I'm a few. not, but I'm seeing those pop up as well. I guess those were okay. written, the, the Ramona ones, there's a Huggins. These, these were, like, in the 50s. Oh, the 50s? I didn't I know, realize like, they were that old. There's a Ramona Quimby that came out in 81, but I'm seeing like Beezus and Ramona came out in 55. So quite a span Oh my here. gosh. I know. What? Yeah. They're older than I thought. There's, um, there's one called Dear Mr. Henshaw that I loved. Man, anyway, I mean, 
anyone listening who is kind of at that, you know, you could be any age and enjoy these books. So it doesn't matter. Just know that they're children's novels. But if you're into that sort of thing, I do recommend them. Uh, oh my god! Beverly Cleary is a classic. She Beverly Cleary. Beverly Cleary only died two years ago, and she was what? a hun- and she was a hundred and five. How did I? What? She was a. <laughs> she was born in 1916 and died in oh 21. God. She was a hundred and five. What a god! A Yo, well That's, done. Hats off. Did, you did it. Did you see the last book written since you're since you're there? Uh, you look that up. I can try. They're not like ordered. Um, I was just Beverly Cleary last book. I'm sure someone's googled that. Uh, I wonder if it's like in the '90s or like she was doing it right up until she died. That's what I'm curious about. Okay, I think this is just the last Ramona book because it says '99, but it might be the last book because she would have been pretty old by then anyway. The Ramona books are a series of eight humorous children's novels. Blah blah blah. The first book, Beezus and Ramona, appeared in '55, and the final book, Ramona's World, was published in '99. She was she was writing these Ramona books, just even just the Ramona books for forty four years. It looks like I looked it up too. It looks like ninety nine is the last one, so it's probably that same one. Wow, yeah, that's kind of like her flagship series, I guess. Out of her, excuse me, her lineup. I didn't. I liked the the books as a kid with boys more, probably just because I could naturally relate to them better. But right. the, but some some of the Ramona books were about the dog because she's got a dog, and I liked those. And the cool thing about her universe, and I'm sure, you know, other writers of like multiple books do the same thing, but all of hers are kind of like, or most of them are in the same universe, but sometimes it's just about the dog. Sometimes it's just about Ramona. I think there's one where the dog and the mouse and the motorcycle do something together or something like they They combine all of them together and then they kind of all go separate too. So I loved it because it's like this huge universe and as as a kid it's just oh that's so cool like anything any combination of characters you want in the story she probably did it yeah forget so. the cinematic universes as made popular by marvel how about the beverly cleary literary universe hell yes <laughs> the bclu if i recall weston i think it might be fun just for you this in an afternoon i think to write Dear a mr henshaw oh. if you read one of these books <laughs> I, I remember demers to henshaw was like really really good and i like that when i was like a little bit older obviously these are all kids books still keep that in mind but sure um but anyway we digress um today actually what we're talking about is literally the comp- <laughs> very different from reading a book <laughs> but it still involves words oh and it involves writing well not it, it involves typing okay um so I'm just gonna get. I'm just gonna get right at it, okay? Because I don't. Because I just don't think we could have transitioned, or we it. probably. Let's just jump into just it. Jump hey, Weston, into it. do you on your desk or near you? Do you have a little device that you would call a smartphone? Funny, you should say that. It is on my desk. I've got it on my little charging pad right now. Ooh, is it a Samsung charging pad? And uh, oh, or prob- an off-brand pro- uh, one? Probably. I think. Yeah, I think I got, I got this at. It's a Hyper Gear. But hyper gear. hyper gear so no i don't think it is samsung it's cracked and doesn't work if you have it if you don't have it like exactly right because i've dropped it many times but uh <laughs> <laughs> does it um does it charge pretty fast because for a long time those uh didn't they would take forever to charge it doesn't charge very fast it definitely charges faster if you're plugged in it doesn't charge very fast. Mm. It definitely doesn't charge very fast now that it's cracked, and it definitely, definitely doesn't charge very fast now that it's not plugged into a wall. It's plugged into my just my computer tower, so it's just drawing like just extra power from there. So if I leave it like on right. the pad for like an hour, it might get like five percent or ten percent. <laughs> but I mean, like, if, especially if you if you're there, like, if you're working all day, like at like just at the desk or whatever. I mean, whatever. Yeah, it'll, it's it'll just, it's more or less like, oh, I'm just drawing a little extra power, it's not it's just so it doesn't die on me, more or less. Right. Well, I asked I asked what brand it was because I remember um, my Samsung one. I actually still have it. I actually still use it. Um, it 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 works really well, but also it's like probably double the price of whatever you paid for the one you had or you have. So like, it depends on how often you do it. I only do mine. Um, at night and i only charge my phone when i like have to 
Right. So so my schedule for charging my phone is really weird. So like if it's at 40% and it's bedtime, I'm not doing anything with it. Um, I'll just wait till it's at 10% the next day at 10 a.m. and then and then charge it. Yeah, but anyway, I can't do that. My phone dies too fast now. I'm in the market for a new phone. Uh, phone dealers out there, if you're looking to sponsor the podcast, I am in the market for a new phone. Yes. Samsung, um, Google Pixel, uh, I, not Apple, please, but uh, anyone else? Yeah. It, um, you know what's funny? I When I was still playing the Android game, which I, I still miss to this day, if I ever go back to one, I'm thinking about getting a Pixel because some of those Pixels, I used to work in that industry, and those I played with them a lot. I like those phones a lot. When um, I got the, and their batteries are awesome, too. When I got this one, I've got the S10, the Samsung S10. Um, also a good phone. When I got it, I was eyeballing Pixels at the time, but went with Samsung. So yeah. I know a lot of people, um, a lot of like like super deep phone nerds, I used to be in those circles a little bit back in the day. They were like really into Pixel when that came out because it was like just stock Android without all the extra, you know, manufacturer like bloatware and stuff that's put on the phones, which by the way, you can just uninstall anyway. But um, I know that that was like a nice thing for a lot of people. It's like it's this native Android without all the extra. Well, and stuff. it also should make sense because Google is the. Google. Like Google right. developed the Android software, and then they made the Google Pixel, which is a phone that runs on the end. It just makes sense that Google should make a phone that runs Android I better know. than anybody else. Now, I can't say that that's always the case between different models. Some phones are really better than others, but you would think that Google would make the best Android phone. You would think, and <laughs> but you would maybe, think, you and know. that's what. And that's what caught my attention at first when the original Pixel came out. And I remember I worked for Verizon at the time, and it sold pretty well too, at least out of out of the Android um, user base that that we had in our local area. Like a lot of people wanted it, which it's is also cool. supposed which, to have like the best Android camera because everyone likes the iPhone. Like, yes. oh my god, the camera is so much better. And then the Pixel was the one that was like, "Now hold on, hold my beer." Well, like, speaking of that, let me let me speak up for that. As someone who's used both and is currently using an iPhone, I can be the first one to say that iPhone does not have the best camera, and it hasn't for a long time. And I'm I'm tired of that whole like, you know, like if you see like a video, people just assume that if something's not great quality, it's an Android phone, which like in terms of the camera, and it's just not true. In fact, um, the there's this weird thing though. And I don't know why Sam. I don't know if it's Samsung or all Android phones, but like a lot of people point to Snapchat, which I don't really use anymore. But I do know that Snapchat has always looked better on iPhone. And the reason why, though, and I think you and I might have talked about this literally forever ago. But the reason why is because, like, when you use Snapchat on an iPhone, it natively, like, it actually opens the camera um, on. On, on on like an Android device, I know Samsung for sure what it'll do. Like it won't actually open the native camera app; it'll like mirror it and just still run it through Snapchat. So it's like mm. it's got this extra layer, <laughs> and so it just naturally just won't look quite as good. I don't know why. I wonder I don't know if, if it's still like that. But. I wonder if that's because when you develop for Apple, because Apple's so controlled, you know that once you develop your yeah. your app to run a specific way, it will always run that way on Apple versus on Android devices, since there are so many different models and so many different cameras to work with, if maybe that's like very complicated to, to develop for. So instead of developing for it, they developed their mirror system that just more or less uses the lens but doesn't actually use the the camera s software itself maybe i'm spitballing here there could also be a bunch of conspiracy maybe there's some under the table like snapchat's getting paid off by big apple make snapchat run Ooh. better on apple so that people want apple i don't know i like that theory better yeah that's just wild. I like the that's, spicy stuff. <laughs> that's wild conspiracy. This is not slander or libel. This is just wild conspiracy. But also, I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Also, uh, it's not conspiracy or anything. Lights go off. Light shines upon you. But it's also, <laughs> but also. conspiracy. <laughs> um. So one thing that all the phones have in common, though, Weston, because we're I'm still not getting this there, <laughs> <laughs> is texting. Oh, yeah, texting. Yeah, um, people still. I do wanted that. to talk to you today. 
Yeah, people still do that to some degree. I I was uh I was just curious. I wanted to know your history with it and like how you view your personal texting etiquette, if you will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's cha- that's, yeah, that's that has uh, that has definitely changed over the years. I part of mm-hmm. me still really misses having physical buttons in my phone, like on the old flip phones that we used to have, because I could oh, type yeah. so fast on those keyboards because you had the tactile sensation, like you could feel where the buttons were, and I would misclick far less often than I do now, where it's just the screen and my fat fingers and the tiny keys on the screen or whatever. I often misclick and autocorrect is just always wrong it is it's just, it has no idea what i'm trying to say it'll be like i'm trying to spell giraffe and i'll miss the 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 i and it'll be like g-r-a-f-f-e or something it's like did you mean jungle gym no <laughs> how <No>. why <laughs> not at all that is not what so it'll be it's like hilarious. random stuff and it's always wrong and i i part of me misses the physical buttons i actually turned autocorrect off i figured it out after years of uh saying i would do it i turned it off i said i'm done i'm done if i'm if i have Good a typo you. it is officially my typo and not autocorrect just making up some nonsense <laughs> right that's a what well, also kind of keeps you it, it like it, it helps with your like spelling chops too. You know, you can't get lazy. You because I'm sure you're going to look back at it anyway, and at least in most cases, well, and go okay. Even yep, if you're looks good, send worried off. about your spelling, there is still the the like suggested word or whatever it's called when it gives you like three words that they're trying to guess what you're going to say. So if you're if you're yeah. spelling, misspelling something wildly, if it if it knows what you're trying to say, it'll 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 be there. You can click on that. So it's still kind of there. That's fair. And I still I, have the swipe you know, text, so I can kind of like swipe a word that I'm kind of close to. And if it figures it out, because it's not technically autocorrect, but because you're swiping it, it like tries to figure out the word for you. So I could do that. But if I'm just typing, I, typing, like picking my thumb up and clicking buttons, it's gone. Tell me if your phone has this. My, my iPhone has this feature, and I hate it. And I don't know actually how to turn this particular feature off. And I've been through all the settings. But it's, it's where... Like, I can turn off, like, autocorrect, but it'll still do this thing where, like, it, like, quote-unquote smart learns me, and then what it'll do is if, if I have, like, common typos, like, like common, like, this quick, like, I accidentally spell a word wrong because I'm typing fast, um, it will, in theory, adjust it automatically without even asking because it knows after so much time, if I type in the word tire, but I accidentally, at the end of the word tire, I put a... I don't know, whatever letters close to E, like an R or like another R instead of an E, it'll know I'm trying to say tire. Yeah. Well, so like in theory, I like that idea. But the problem is that it kind of gets messy because it'll start, I'll start spelling words a certain way. It'll start basically doing it with the misspellings. So I'll be spelling a word, but then it'll keep trying to correct a word that's similar to it and it thinks i'm spelling another one and it makes it a misspelled word right does that make sense it's but, really stupid i hate it yeah it learns that oh you always type this way so even though it's wrong i'm going to replace your correct word with your wrong word because you always spell the wrong word and it's like right but so, why <laughs> and i thought like this must be some sort of like smart learning thing and how do i turn it off and if i turn off um autocorrect it just turns off everything. So I think it's right. just a part of autocorrect, but it yeah. should be separate. I, I don't know how to get to that. That it's, was, it makes me I think I'm supposed to have a smart learning thing in my phone too, but it's not very smart. Uh, you know, I work, <laughs> I work in an industry where we make bread a lot and I talk about bread a lot. I text about bread a lot, always <laughs> bread. My phone doesn't think I talk about bread. My phone thinks I'm in love with a guy named Brad. <laughs> the word bread spelled correctly and in lowercase always 100% of the time not 99% not 50 not any variation of percent 100% of the time would change the word bread into capital brad I don't even know so a weird. brad I don't there's no brad in my contacts I never type right. about brad I don't know a brad but I'm always spelling well, bread, and I'm always correcting Brad back to bread. So whatever the smart learning thing is supposed to be, it was not learning, Jack. <laughs> yeah, that's bizarre because it's not like I understand if you were trying to spell some really 
odd, uncommon word right. that was like close to Brad, but Brad is a common word. It's, it's Brad. It's a common word. It's a, <laughs> there's an emoji for Brad. <laughs> You know, because that, the, that's what you should have test, tested. Do the emoji and see if it still corrects it to like to just a some, picture of a guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because like this, the man emoji. Because that was the other thing oh. that um, later on, not necessarily for bread, because bread always turned to Brad, but like it'd be other like crap. I don't even remember what emojis it was. It'd be like Apple or something like that. Right. And the word would go bold black. And if I try to click on it, because I didn't mean to say Apple, I meant to say like like an asshole or something and autocorrect it right. to apple something like that like where I, I meant to say a different word and it would autocorrect to a word that has an emoji right so mm-hmm. like uh like wave maybe i meant to say like like waste or something and it, it was like wave so you could it would be bold black wave i'm like i didn't mean to say wave so i'll click on it to like change it back to waste But because it's bold, when you click on it, all it does is it brings up, would you like to change this to the waving emoji? I'm like, I don't want a freaking emoji. I want to (laughs) fix the goddamn typo. And you can't do that. You have to go, you have to click very carefully at the end of the word, hit delete, it delete the whole goddamn word, (laughs) and you start over. And I'm like, I'm just trying to correct V to S or whatever. (laughs) Listen, for some reason, my. And it sound I'm hearing it in your voice too, but like my rage is so <laughs> untethered <laughs> when just in those moments, like in those little, I'll be sitting at my desk, like at my day job or whatever, and it, it's similar things like that. It's like I, it's just one letter or whatever it is. <laughs> you know, I have very similar stories, and in those moments, for some reason, I'm more mad than most things in my life will make me mad. But th- it, I think it's because it's such a simple, stupid little thing, right. and it keeps changing back to something I don't want. Like, I, I I don't know what it is. It just but it feels like it's actively working against you, like conspiring against you. And it's like you you obey me, machine. I don't right, obey exactly. you. <laughs> you obey me. You know. Um, <laughs> a, a few minutes ago, you talked about emojis. So let's let's go there for a second. Did you? You and I text. Um, yeah. and you, I rarely or I rarely if ever have seen emojis from you is this a personal choice or is or they, they're just not a part of your texting vocabulary you see back in my day emojis didn't exist we had emoticons you'd have like a, a colon in a left parenthesis for happy or a right parenthesis for sad yep. Yep. uh no like it's true there was a time back in the flip phone era and then the early smartphone era for me where i didn't touch emoji i was like i know the emoticons i know what i want to do with those and i didn't use very crazy ones because you could get some pretty crazy the emoticons but mine were like happy sad um the xd for like you know laughing or whatever so like i had emoticons in my vocabulary uh but also i wasn't a big texter there wasn't a lot of people i texted so even emoticons like i reserved for people that i was probably like i I don't know flirting with or something (laughs) and i don't i don't know like so like um if i was just texting like a buddy like if it were you and i'm like okay we're meeting up uh, at your house to like hang out or whatever we're not gonna sit there and like chat back and forth it was more like you know making appointments or whatever is what what yep. my texting style was and actually i was i was a big english nerd and i was full into like writing so i was a big like full sentences proper no goofing around yep um i'm not like that at all anymore i'm pretty i've given up on on who i used to be, <laughs> on who i used to be I, <laughs> it depends on who i'm talking to I, I can obviously be very much more formal with some people but then other people i'm just like sometimes uh punctuation's there sometimes it's not i definitely use more emoji now than ever probably not with you because again we don't just sit there and chat back and forth but if i'm in like in a chat with right. somebody then um actually the emojis happen more i'm starting this has been a process okay. i'm starting to learn where they are in the keyboard because that was a big hang up where it's like well i would love to use this emoji but i don't know if it exists or where to find it <laughs> you know right so it's a continuous progression for you that's interesting i'm evolving um, or devolving depending on how you want to see it yeah dep- I, so here's a more specific question then. So you say, because it kind of depends on who, you, who you're talking to, which, by the way, it's the same for me, and I'll explain that in a second. But since we're on this topic, I wanted to ask, say you're, you're, you're messaging and I, you know, maybe a potential like dating partner. Right. What's your go-to 
messaging style? Like, are you using full sentences, punctuation? I go full e-girl with the oo-woos and the, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, okay. Uh, no, uh, it, it depends a little bit if it's like a dating situation, like you meet somebody, or if you can kind of figure out what their vibe is. I'm like a chameleon. I, I'm the I'm the karma chameleon or whatever, right? Like, so I kind of figure out what it seems like their vibe is, and I try to match that energy. So if it seems like they're very, very proper and full spoken English punctuation, etc., I can absolutely do that. That's like at one point in time my default like mode. So I can I can pull that off easily. But if they if they they seem a lot more casual and emoji and, and that kind of thing, then I'm like okay. I, I can kind of loosen up here and kind of throw some stuff out myself as well. So I'm, I'm kind of a chameleon okay. like that. I figure out what, what someone else is doing. And I kind of try to match that yeah. energy, that vibe. That's exactly what I do too, and I have done. Um, in, in fact, the, the, I've been thinking about this actually just as we've been recording, where usually I, I don't even know what necessarily my default sort of texting mode is these days. I know for years... My how I would text, you talk about the chameleon thing, would be based on if I was seeing somebody at the time and how they texted. Yeah. <laughs> because I would, they would be primarily who I would text because I don't like to text that much in general. I'd rather just talk in person, make plans, and go see you or whatever. And except for them, maybe I would message them more often. So, like, if I was dating somebody for a while who did use a lot of emojis, I would find myself using those in other conversations with people too that are just more casual conversations. So, it just kind of, Leads. It's just like if in real life, if like you, you know, sometimes it's easy to pick up like little uh, isms that people in your life have, and you can start to use them. You may not even mean to. Well, especially you know, if, like a way if somebody says something or whatever. If you're talking, especially if you're talking about like dating, like if you're talking to someone new that you're like interested in, you're chatting back and forth, and then you start picking up the kind of their things. Well, chances are, if th- everything's going well, you're probably like in a pretty good mood in general. Like, oh, I'm really into this person. They're really into me. I've got that confidence right. boost. So like you said, that that kind of like maybe leeches into your other conversations as well because you're unusually chipper. So you're like, oh, yeah, I'm sure. going to put the, the, the winky tongue out emoji face in a random conversation to a colleague at work. Yeah, that's not weird. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to get your work done. <laughs> <laughs> winky with yeah. a tongue out it's like what's the, what's happening right now it is crazy what like an emo like how much emo one emoji can change the tone of the same sentence in like 10 different ways right i do it can completely change i do find that on the internet if i'm like on twitter or something um if it seems like someone is misconstruing your intent as something more serious than you mean an emoji fixes that immediately Right, like uh, the, I had yeah. a tweet um, the other day where I I don't I don't remember what the it was. someone posted a thing and I, I I like commented on it or something like that, but uh, someone and I don't remember what the topic was. Someone commented something along the lines like, "Well, technically, this other person's right too because X Y Z." And I'm like, "Oh no, you misunderstand. I'm not. This is not an argument. I am adding to the conversation." <laughs> so I don't remember what yeah. I said, but I said, "Oh no, no, blah 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 blah." Uh, and then the like the the smiley emoji that's like the the really toothy smiley emoji. So I'm like a super friendly emoji, right? There's no way to misconstrue this. There's no argument happening. I am not your average Twitter user. I am a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not, but like well, you know, in this conversation, I was say, you say you're a nice person. <laughs> I'm a ni- but I'm- you did. <laughs> But listen, I want to say it. I don't know if you said this on on air or not, but you were like, "I'm in my what'd you say? Your your oh, villain era. I'm in, I'm in my villain era. Look, it's it's hard. I'm trying to be. <laughs> I'm a nice person. I'm a nice person <laughs> until I'm not. No, I'm trying to. I'm I'm actually, I'm actually trying to be less of a nice person. Okay, God darn it! I'm trying to be a mean grouch. I'm trying to get to my Scrooge era here. I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm in a new decade By of way, life. I I need to commit some crimes. Keep them small. <laughs> we need to do a pod on a weekly basis. Social. So keep them small. Social crimes. Okay, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> oh, totally random. You said social, scri- cr- yes. uh, social crimes, and I thought of Cards Against Humanity for some reason. Yeah. And did you know that that game is 100 years old? What? No. I know. What? It's cr- No, I know. The name has changed over, over the years, but it's the concept 
and the it is is the same. Look it up. 100 years old. They just released their 100 year anniversary pack, Cards and it's not a joke against human hu- humanity. I know. Invention. By the way, I felt like you did when I was told. I was like, "There's no way it's 100 years old." Obviously, the severity of the cards have changed, um, but there were still cards that were banned, like in the 70s and stuff that they that they're like bringing back in this like hundred year anniversary bundle you know what that means though it's still not as old as beverly cleary (laughs) it's still not (laughs) as old as beverly cleary and probably less weird than eating drywall you know if i were to presume if i had to presume are we saying playing cards against the humanity is less weird or do you mean it being a hundred years old is less weird than eating drywall that'd be well that actually does that does kind of change it (laughs) Because these are two different things, and suddenly, I think eating drywall might be less weird than Cards Against Humanity coming out in 1923. I'm looking at the 100th anniversary edition box right now. I like the Roaring Twenties thing that they're doing. Um, yeah, no, I love the look of it. Because my uh, our uh, our friend Hayden, he's the one that told me about that. Him and I were chatting the other day. He's like, yeah, it's 100 years old. And I'm like, no way, because I thought, no, he's lying. He He got the number mixed up. He was probably 10, like a 10-year anniversary or something. Then I looked, and lo and behold, there it is. It, um, what was I going to say? It's I had the, something to say about it. I can't remember It's it the original 1923 edition. It says it includes an individually numbered main game with all gold cards and a solid gold box and 30 selected cards from the original 1923 edition of Cards of Humor and Whimsy. That's what it was called. Cards of Humor so, and Whimsy. <laughs> I don't know when it changed, but it changed to my. For, this is what I've heard. I haven't looked it up, but what I've heard it was that there was a, like a president. I believe it was a president, or it might have been just brought to some big part of Congress at one point, and they were referring to this game. Maybe it was like not good for the youth or something, and they <laughs> they called it Cards Against Humanity. And literally, as a as a nod to that, they changed their name. That's amazing. The Cards Against Humanity. Which I think I, I do think it's that amazing. just goes I don't know to that show was, that if the government wants to dunk on a product, that product will just lean into it and sell better than ever because no one likes the government. <laughs> exactly. Well, clearly it worked because I haven't been familiar with this game. I haven't I, just since it's been named Cards Against Humanity, and I'd probably say college, early college years, maybe late high schools when I first heard about it. Yeah, it wasn't a thing. I think. I think we'd heard about it. I feel like we played it or something before college, like late high school, maybe. I could be inventing yeah. that, but I feel like it was that era slash moving into college is when it, it like we actually heard about it and we're playing it and we're like, oh my God, it's the funniest game ever. Uh, do you remember when we we pretty commonly played like a knockoff version on our phones? Remember that? Mm, I do not. We, we might have, have. I just don't remember we- it. This is when we would go to uh, um, our friend Aiden's house, and we'd have like our, it's like our weekly guys' night there. Yeah, and we all had it on our phones, and we'd like sit on the couch or couches, whatever, however the setup was, and we would like all hold our phones and just play that way, and you could see each other's answers. But it wasn't called that; it was called something different. I don't know, and you could put your own answers in there and stuff. And maybe I might way, vaguely remember that. I remember uh, going um, to Aiden's house and we shot an episode, like several episodes of, um, what, what do we call it? It was like the Raging Greek or whatever with Peach being a Let's Player on my channel. Oh, yeah. I remember that. He was playing like uh, Mario Mario uh, Maker. Mario Maker, the one where you make Mario's. Mario Maker. Yep. <laughs> that, yeah, you, yeah, you just build a Mario. Build a Mario. <laughs> um, that Oh, I forgot about that. I remember too... I had high hopes for that too. Like I watched, I remember those. Didn't you do one for like Smash Two, or maybe that was just more like we all played uh, Smash? Yeah, I don't think that was an episode of Raging Greek or whatever the heck I called it at the time. But I think that was uh, just like a multiplayer thing we did on the channel. God, I, 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 I every do, now and again I go back and remember those old videos. I'm like, oh, these are shot so poorly. <laughs> I, I don't know. If, I don't know if this is true. If, we, if I went back to watch, but I do remember like watching him at the time, thinking he. It's like he underperformed when the camera was on. Because, to my knowledge, maybe I'm wrong and he still was yelling up a storm, but I just remember going, Where, where's the rage? He always rages and goes, hut, 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 and says all these horrible words oh, pe- like yeah, when he's peesh. playing these games. Well, yeah, he, peesh, he yeah. was probably then, like, for- toned back because he was like, oh, I'm actually, like, if people actually see me, 
that aren't my friends, <laughs> right? That's the world that could judge him. And I completely understand that because I do that. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I totally get that. Um, I'm much more likely if I'm playing a game. Oh, by the way, we're going a little late because I think our second segment's going to be a little short. So don't, it's okay. Ex- don't um, explain anything to the audience. They don't know or oh, care. No. <laughs> um, um, sorry, everybody. I didn't Stop apologizing anyway, to yeah. them. This is what they signed up. They're half an hour into this. They signed up for it. <laughs> <laughs> you, but stop, Weston. Listen, you know, there's like that that one guy named Pete. Hey, Pete, who is like, he just he hates when we just kind of like riff, and he loves the segments. <laughs> well, then Pete, can, you know, he's out there. Pete always skips like thirty, <laughs> thirty five minutes in, and he's there. All right. <laughs> like, I thought you were gonna say Pete can suck it. Okay, <laughs> this is your villain era. Say this, it. Pete this can is my suck villain it. era. Pete can suck my big toe. <laughs> but not the little ones those are safer. No, those are harder to get to because they're like closer to each other are... you end up with another toe in your yeah, nose mention... or something <laughs> <laughs> toe in the mouth toe in the nose stop trying to that visualize like, it. A, like i know too late i, I that, that sounds like some weird thing your granddad would say like that's weirder than a man with I don't know, toe in the mouth, toe in the nose, but there's like a whole other you, setup you're before trying you to that say, part. I know what you want to say, and is it's colder than a witch's tit in a brass bra in October. <laughs> I know that's the one you're shooting for. There are variations is, is of that it. How, is that how your dad slash granddad said it? I don't remember exactly. T- it was something, something like that. My, uh, <laughs> for us, it was, maybe it's because we were just really little, but... For us, it was boobies and a brass bra in January. I like the bees for that's the what, al- alliteration. It might have been boobies. <laughs> I I, I I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm riffing. I'm I'm Pete's worst nightmare right now. I'm just making it up. And then the other one that my dad would say is, "Sorry, Pete. Um, I'm still apologizing to Pete. Stop What's it. wrong with me? <laughs> no, the other one, other one, my dad would say is, it, uh, "I'm sweatier than a pig in July." <laughs> So that sounds that sounds like one. That sounds that definitely sounds like one. Uh, I I wonder like like if I become a dad, if I'm gonna like carry these on, or if I'm gonna have my own. Because I mean, he got his somewhere, right? That he just but like they had to start somewhere too. Yeah. Well, th- there will be things that know. your folks have told you that you will pass on, and there will be new Alexisms that you don't even realize is an Alexism until like your kids are like, "The hell is wrong with you." It'll be like a teenager, like, no one says this. I've grown up with this all my life, and you're the only guy. You're so weird. <laughs> I just wonder, like, <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. But I just wonder, like, if a lot of these, like, internet isms will carry on, like, to real life. Like, um, <laughs> I, I don't say this anymore, but for a while there was, I would say this, and I saw it online a lot, and I'd say it online, too. I would say relatable content. Yeah. Like, I don't say that anymore, but I did. I'm wondering, like, I'm just going to be, like, 45 years old. I got a kid, and then he says something that I kind of relate to. And go, <laughs> relatable content. Yeah. Like, I just don't see that. Or, like, <laughs> or, like rest in peace me, you know. Like, I just... <laughs> Press F to pay your respect. <laughs> uh, yeah, 40... It's like, just saying that out loud to your kid. I'm imagining, that like, uh, your 10-year-old kid, I'm 45, and it's just like, do you know the way? <laughs> it's like, the way where? Do you know the way? <laughs> The way to our oh queen. My gosh. But you know that literally will happen because it's no different than like when our parents or grandparents showed us something from their childhood. I can't, like it's no different. I can't wait until so, we're all 100 years old in a nursing home and the grandkids are like coming in to like visit or whatever. And as a part of like the game night for like New Year's Eve or something, some old fart uh, convinced one of the nurses to play freaking Harlem Shake and we all just bust it and break our hips in the nursing home. <laughs> Harlem Shake was crazy. <laughs> Holy crap! I totally that you you brought me back to that mouse and Harlem Shake all in one segment. That mouse, it's a uh, the Ugandan Knuckles. <laughs> no, no, the mouse. Um, I I don't I know that. I'm talking about the 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 movie at the beginning of the podcast. I can't remember. Oh, Fivel. The American Tale. Fivel. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm thinking. I don't think. I don't think Knuckles was in. Uh, you know what, everybody? We came a long way from the beginning of today's episode. We started with, with American Tale, talked about cell phones. Now we're talking about Gandon yeah. Knuckles and Harlem Shakes. We kind of all over the place. And Pete, you'll be happy to know that I think it's time to move on to our next activity. 
And Weston, this is going to be a simple one, but what you're going to be doing today is answering some some trivia questions about, well, about texting. Let's see how well you know your texting stats slash facts. Oh, probably not at all. (laughs) I guess we're going to find out. We'll be right back. Profoundish is brought to you in part by The Two Piece Podcast, a show where my significant other and I compare and contrast our top five lists on a variety of topics. Not only is it fun, but we also provide facts and trivia about our topics. Come laugh, learn, and listen to The Two Piece Podcast on your preferred platform of choice. Profoundish is brought to you in part by HastilyMadeDecision.com. Get your poetry fix from my poetry blog featuring haiku, senryu, freeform stuff, and more. Again, that's HastilyMadeDecision.com for your poetry fix. Bow chicka wow wow. I'm doing my. Uh, this is like like funky elevator music. You know the next segment. That sounds more like kind of porny old school like sexy music I just, I've never heard wow in an elevator <laughs> and the lights start dimming red this is the low you notice that of the, elevator the elevator's got really plush carpet and you're like mm, why is it so cozy in here <laughs> is it getting hot in here <laughs> that smells really good <laughs> All right. The uh, the the hatch at the top of the elevator that goes to the shaft or whatever opens up and a fireman rolls down a pole into the elevator. There it is. <laughs> yeah, but you know the but, sexy kind. But before that happens, you like this little panel by the where you would press the buttons. There's like this extra panel that pops out of the wall and it goes pick your preference. Then it can be man, woman, both, whatever. So it chooses who comes down on the pole. And you, you know. click one, and you don't get that one. You can get whoever's there. If you were running it, that's exactly what would happen. Yeah. It's like, what's your preference, woman? Too bad we've got a hot, sweaty man. If it's, and then if it's both, you're still on it. You just don't send anybody down, and they just stay stay lonely. <laughs> <laughs> what's your preference, both? We don't condone that here. Oh, weird. Not very, very, very not progressive of this elevator. <laughs> or, or you send down like, just like, thirteen staplers. To something completely not sexy. I don't know. When you said 13, I thought maybe I was thinking of the, of the seven dwarves. I thought you were going to say 13 dwarves coming down <laughs> 13 the dwarves. elevator. I don't know where I thought you were going to say that. Oh, you want a man and a woman? Here, take 13 dwarves. <laughs> 13 dwarves. Oh, that's and I'm hilarious. imagining the, the, the chunky dwarves from like, you know, fantasy, like massive beards. Oh my gosh. They're, they're pretty <laughs> tanky. I don't think you can fit 13 in there. I guess you can stack them up. Depends how big the <laughs> elevator is, too. You put them in a trench coat. <laughs> well, that just reminds me. Man, we're digressing. That reminds me of the I, Austin Powers movie. I love movie. that this is going to still be in the podcast, and Pete is losing his mind right Pete now. Pete is so pissed. <laughs> um, did you ever see the third Austin Powers where he like stands on top of Minnie Me's shoulders? <laughs> Yeah, I did. And then, oh my god, that was so funny that he's like, he has to go like give a urine sample. <laughs> and he's just spitting out of it. It's funny. All right, Weston, let's talk <laughs> yes. texting. And let's... Let's talk turkey. We have nine questions, mainly because I couldn't think of a good tenth one, or find a good tenth one, <laughs> that are just based off of facts, um, stats, and a few other just kind of... <laughs> questions as well they're all just pick okay. a or b questions some are true and false some are just pick a or b um and i'm thinking here if you get seven out of the nine i'm gonna no, i'm changing it if you get six out of the nine correct you you just win but if you get <laughs> okay, okay okay nothing there but if you get less than that correct then your phone just like the Note 7, will explode as soon as this podcast is over. It will catch fire. So Is that why it's like showing me warnings about being overly hot? I thought it was weird. Do you get that? Is it? What, is that did you set up my phone to explode? Because it's like blazing right now. Yeah, it, it's set up to do it. But as long as you get six or more correct, you'll be okay. If not, well. Oh, God. So I think it's listening to me. The stakes are pretty high. Oh, boy. All right, Weston, let's see. <laughs> let's see your uh, text message. <laughs> Stats chops. 
These are some of these are kind of okay. interesting. Um, all right, <laughs> some of them. Some the of rest them. are not. Some are not. You're listening to profoundish. That's hilarious. I came up with nine questions because I I was too lazy to do a tenth, and the nine that I have are only vaguely interesting. It Welcome wasn't laziness. <laughs> all right, here we go. See how I didn't defend the. Some of them aren't that great, <laughs> but it wasn't laziness. <laughs> all right, listen, listen, lazy, listen, Linda. I swear. Listen, um, Linda, you lint liquor. Pete, we're getting there now, I promise. Nokia was the first handset manufacturer to produce a mobile phone that fully integrated and support SMS messages. What year did this phone release? Was it in 1989 or 1993? Well, see, you've thrown me off now because I thought these were phone facts, but now I'm. was it Honda or what? If it wasn't a Kia... What? I said no Kia, silly Billy. Yeah, there's no Kia, so like, is it like, you know, Toyota or? Oh my gosh. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, These are the dad jokes. You're at your you said there's no Kia, again. so what is there? Um, um, it's just a Toyota. I always pronounce it like just Nokia. I don't know how, uh, maybe. Oh, really? I think, uh, yeah, I, I could be wrong there. I just, I had to make fun of you because I just call it Nokia. You know what's funny? I'm I've never heard this could maybe I'm saying it wrong because I've, I've you don't really hear that the name pop up that much these days. But right, um, I've always said Nokia, like Nokia, or sorry, no, no. I'm wondering now. I, even you're questioning it. You said Nokia. I always say Nokia. Yeah, that's correct. You just threw me off there for a second. So <laughs> I couldn't even register the dad joke because I wouldn't even un, like. I just figured you'd know exactly what I meant. So that's interesting. You're like, why are we talking about cars? And I'm like, yes, why are we talking about cars? <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. Okay, I, I'm sorry. Uh, what was the... Qu- uh, Nokia came out with a... Uh... So they were basically the first um, phone manufacturer to produce a phone that fully integrated SMS like messaging. Um, what year okay. did this phone come out? Was it... 1983. So I'm giving you two options. <laughs> <laughs> So let's wait for that. Is one of them 1983? <laughs> no, one of them is 1989, and the other one is Ooh. 1993. Well, I think the one with 80s in it is the one I'm going to go with. So uh, 1989 for 500 points, Steve. Bill, it is incorrect. Um, the What? It is 1993. Wait, 93 for Nokia to do a uh, SMS? To pro- they were the first, yes, to produce a phone that fully integrated SMS messages. You'll learn more about the history I, as we move on here. I mean, obviously, like, phones in the, like, in the early days of cell phones, like, even the, the giant, like, phone in a suitcase that you traveled around with or whatever, like, you could only make phone calls. There was no texting right. on them. So I, I get that. But for some reason, I thought, no, you know, what? now that I'm actually thinking about it, I think I was just hung up on 83 for some reason. <laughs> now that I think about it, I guess it would be like a 90s thing, I guess. I mean, at least 89 was almost 90s. But I, I picked that I picked that year because I thought, oh, he's going to think 80s because he's going to go. It couldn't have been as late as 93. No way. Um, but I guess now that I think about it, like, you know, growing up, my parents had uh, cell phones, but, you know, they were, you know, dumb phones at the time or whatever. But like. Yeah, even back then, like, landlines were very prevalent, and, you yep. know, you called people, you didn't really text, and, like, when you could text, it was, like, $1,000 a character or whatever it was. They were very expensive. Yep. So now that I think about it, I should have said, you said 93? Yeah. I was born 93. That's my birthday. Nokia's like, Weston's bored. I go got a text. Weston's bored. I got a... <laughs> Wish. I got to revolutionize the world. I got, right? I I brought in all true technological innovation to the world uh, is because of me. I mean, this is just facts. Yet, you you still got it wrong. All right, next. <laughs> Question two. <laughs> um, Weston, the first... Oh, my phone's getting hotter. I know, it's slowly getting hotter each one you get wrong. Here we go. The first text message was sent from a computer to a cell in 1983. phone. 1983. No. Um, in... In 1992, okay. What did this message say? Was it? Was it? I. Or do you have something to say first? Well, I was going to say my computer science nerd in me. If I had to guess without you saying anything else, is it's probably "Hello World." 
Okay. Here are because that's the that's the default setting on like every C plus program, like C plus plus program is the hello world um, command. I feel like I knew that, but yeah, in, in passing. Um, all right. So what did this message say? It was the first text message sent from a computer to a cell phone in 1992. Did this message say Merry Christmas or burp? See, this sounds like a trap. <laughs> I know it because sounds like, like one. It sounds like a trap because it's like, well, why, why burp over anything else? If this were like December, you said 1992. You didn't say December. You said 1992. Mm-hmm. If it were December 1992, and we know that texting over phones will happen in 93, so it wouldn't be a long stretch to say this happened in late 92. Merry Christmas would make sense. Burp doesn't make sense, but because you included it, I'm like, is this Alex just pulling an onomatopoeia just out of his butt, out of his mouth to be more accurate? <laughs> Burp. Um, or is this just reality? Because sometimes fiction truly is, I mean, reality truly is less strange than fi- however it, however you say that. Um, I'm going to say it had to be Merry Christmas. It had to be Merry Christmas. Final answer? It couldn't have been burp. Final answer. Ding, ding, ding. You're correct, but I do want to clarify something. The first, because this isn't one of the questions, the first... Uh, text message sent from phone to phone was the word burp and it was from why <laughs> it was you i don't have the answer to that i mean i i did read it at the time when i was getting these questions together and it was um it was basically a term it was like a like an industry term for like getting a new uh, kind of like getting something new off the ground in the tech field they called that a burp was it was it still B-U-R-P, like burp, like belch? Or was it like a weird thing, like B-E-R-P, and once upon a time it stood for something? No, it'd be U-R-P, <laughs> just some industry term at the time. Wow. Yeah. That's, I've never heard this. That's so weird. Me neither. I thought, this is perfect because he's going to be like, he wouldn't have brought up burp if it, it had to be something. I was trying to really get into your Right, that's what there. I was thinking. I'm like, it sounded like a trap, but I'm actually impressed that you didn't just pull that out of your derriere, but it was actually an industry term. So I'm impressed, yeah. actually. <laughs> I take back what I said about l- the laziness before. West, thank you. Weston, and for that reason, <laughs> and mainly just for the reason that you got the question right, your phone has not gotten any hotter yet. Um, yeah, it's kind of staying stationary. It didn't get any cooler. Yeah, you're doing okay right now. All right, next question. I This might be easy. I, I'm trying to remember if I would just know the answer to this. Um, this one is not like a two-choice question. You just have to tell me. What does SMS, SMS stand for? Oh, no. Oh, I knew this. <laughs> I feel like it's something like short messaging service or something like that. I feel like the M is messaging or some, something like that. And maybe the service... I knew this at one point in time, but I right. I know what an SMS is. It's a text. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> you, well, because you'll see that, like, even in um, legal uh, legalese, right, where it's like, you know, a 1-800 number, and then it's like, oh, SMS charges may apply or whatever. And, like, no one using their phones has any idea what an SMS means. They just, it's a text. You know what I mean? Right. Um, it could be, like, it could be, like, short it could be like simplified. It could be. Well, you probably don't need this, but I will. Just... I will tell you this: the middle word yeah. you said is correct. Messaging, yeah. That's what I thought. You're not telling me that the third ro- word was wrong, are you? All I'm telling you is that your second word was correct. That's all I'm going to say. Makes me feel like the other two are wrong. Uh, and I'm willing to believe that because the M was the one I was most confident about. So you didn't really help me any. Well, the only reason why I... S- Actually, why did I tell you? To- All right, never mind. I don't know. I don't know why you told me that. Probably because you knew I was the most confident about messaging. You're like, yes, I'll that tell is him why. that that's correct. I and I'm like, why. yeah, thanks. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think don't overthink anything short- else. I think it's short messaging service, or it's something like that. Is that? It's not that. It's got to be close, right? 
that's my final answer. I can't think of a good. I don't think it's short. Like I like f- the first word is short, but I don't. I can't think of what it is. So I'm just gonna roll with it. Weston, that's all right because yeah. I'm gonna give it to you. It is short. It's not messaging. It's message, but it doesn't matter. It's short oh, okay. message service. Oh, it is short message service. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I was right. I mean, I said messaging, but I mean, I was right. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You, really you immediately maybe, said okay. it, and then and then started to like <laughs> backtrack. backtrack. <laughs> Um, I yeah, don't know. So, I just—it was one of those things. That I'm like, I know I knew it, so I'm like, it's in the recesses of my mind. But something about short messaging service, like messaging service, felt right because you know it's a messaging service. But then I'm like, is it short or is it something like systematic or simplified or stup right. stupendous <laughs> stupendous? I, I'm like, it's something. Okay, okay, I'll take it. Well, you're not doing bad right now. You're 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 a uh, is it when you're? Is it one for three or are you two for three? I forget which one means I got, like I you're got winning. Two right. Well, I'm two for three right now. For I always get rest. that confused. You're two for three. Well, it kind of depends on context a little bit because if you're like in a in a losing streak, you can like ironically, oh yeah, I'm three for three because you've like yeah. done three awful things or whatever. So like, it depends on the context. I'm trying to get them right. So right now, I'm two for three. Two for three. Well. You're doing pretty good. Your your phone's living another day. Let's get to at least as of now. Wait. So Let's, we don't know that yet. Lives for another right. minute. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get uh, to question four here. According to a recent study done by Dialogue Health, texting is the second most utilized smartphone function behind accessing social media apps. True or false? Uh, well, is, how recent did you say that study is? I just have recent study. Okay. And um, I believe actually like recent, recent. I'm pretty sure from to my knowledge, I think it's very recent or pretty recent at least. Then I'm going to say true on the basis that uh, especially a lot of younger folks. And I don't know what age cutoff this is. I just know it becomes more and more true. The younger, younger you get. Uh, people are not messaging through like SMS. They're messaging through like your Snapchat or through like, uh, you know, any of the social medias, like through Messenger or Twitter or whatever. A lot of people uh, message through a third party that isn't their SMS anymore. So I kind of believe it. I would say true. Final answer? Final answer, true. It is false. And I actually was <sighs> surprised by that too. Um, it I can. I send know you... a lot of texts get sent out, but I mean, man, I do use social media an awful lot. <laughs> so, now, right, right. No, oh, I get it. Yeah, um, I believe where this came from um, is probably like worldwide because this is a worldwide study. I, mean, I didn't, I guess, share yeah, that but part. Even worldwide, but... people use like freaking like WhatsApp. So, like, I, I guess my question is, like, does, like, That's true. WhatsApp and Messenger, do those count as, like, text messages or do they count as social media for this study? I would want to know, know the details on that if I looked into that further. I actually would, too, because WhatsApp is, like, huge. So, especially overseas. Yeah. Um, but either way, in, the con- in this right now, Weston, you did get that incorrect. Um, God, and- my phone's turning orange orange holy crap yeah it's it's getting pretty warm i think it's melting my uh my my charging pad right now i think it's melting my face off (laughs) um all right here's a here's another one here weston what percentage of the world population owns a smartphone and this is recent too seven is it just seven people above 90 percent or below 90 percent Owns a smartphone. World world population. That one's um ninety percent is the tricky one. Like if you were like obviously the lower the percent, the more obvious it, it is it'd be above. But there are a lot of people in the world that don't have smartphones and don't need smartphones. You're talking about um like when you talk about like first world, second world, blah blah blah. Like the super developed countries with a lot of um like I don't know what the term is for this, like commercial industry, like you work office jobs or whatever. Definitely have smartphones because you're like dealing with computers and tech all the time. So in those places, their phones are just 
just common everyday item. Like America is one of them. Like, uh, like freaking everybody. You could not have a home, a car, or a job, and you probably still have a smartphone. Like, it's mm. more or less a necessity of life to have a smartphone. It's not literally, but it feels like it. Like, you can get a smartphone in America and not have any of those other things. It's kind of wild how just important they are to like our current culture in this country but you couldn't say that of some place like um i don't know like i don't know if that's true in like kenya or something (laughs) i don't know you know what i mean like i I, i'm just picking a random country that i know nothing about so correct me if i'm wrong because like if i picked a different uh developed if i said like spain i don't know anything about spain but they're fairly developed or whatever so i don't know the developing nations like india like india's got like somewhere between one and two billion people on the planet i have no idea how common smartphones are there if they're not common again we're talking 90 percent. if they're not stupid common then that would be a massive country to like bring that number down you know what i mean Um, right so for that sake, because cell phones feel like the, they're in everybody's pockets, but I don't know that that's true in a lot of nations that are either underdeveloped or currently developing, I'm going to say false. I think it's under, or whatever you, the AB was. I'm going to say the under 90%. But my gut wants to believe it's above because phones are everywhere. But final I'm going to say under. I'm going to say under final answer. Weston, that is False. It is no! above ninety percent. It's about it's. I don't have the exact number. It's ninety one point like two percent as of twenty twenty. That is actually wild. Like I know, like the, like the worldwide literacy rate. I don't think is ninety <laughs> percent. <laughs> right. That's, That's what, what makes I'm it so saying. wild. I'm gonna I'm gonna go worldwide literacy rate. The global literacy rate for all males is 90%, and the rate for all females is 82.7%. Of course, females being held back because there are nations where women just aren't allowed to go to school. So, yeah. again, the just the literacy rate is somewhere between 80 and 90%, and somehow phones is above 90%. That's, it's, that's wild. <laughs> I, that, that really is. So there are some people out there <laughs> who have a phone, and they're, they're probably not texting. <laughs> You're probably they want not to. texting. Maybe <laughs> just YouTube. Um, just watching the videos of the funny man playing well, video games or something. I will say this, Weston. That is your third strike right there. It is. My phone is actually... I think I hear it beeping. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. Well... It's like it's wrap- like kind of like pulsing. It's slowly pulsing white hot right now. I think it's about to blow. Well, let, let's wrap this up. <laughs> a um, couple more here. We actually, You actually just brought up India, so this is... This, this works. Which country holds the title for the most active texters per month, adding up to <clears throat> a little over 730 million? Which country? Is it India or China? Those would be my two biggest guesses because they are the two biggest countries on the planet. Because <laughs> that was my big hang up with the 90% thing. Like, I just don't know if smartphones... For all I know, in either of those countries, maybe there's like a good mix of smart and dumb phones or whatever. The fact that there are so many people in that in both those countries, and the fact that the worldwide phone uh, having rate is over ninety percent, leads me to believe that both India and China probably both equally have roughly as many smartphones. The question is, what's the highest texting rate? And I'm going to lean towards India. Because India is known for a lot of things. One, they, they're a developing nation. So people are adopting technology quick over there. I just didn't know where they stood in technology. They're a developing na- nation. They're adopting technology very quickly. And they're very enthusiastic about it, the Indian people. And also, India is well known for a number of its phone-based and related businesses. Uh, everyone knows the, the Indian call center stereotype, but there are other businesses related to basically sending out mass emails, texts, that kind of thing. It's a whole industry. And I think India is known for it. So I'm going to lean towards India and hope that's not just a wild racist stereotype or something. <laughs> All right. Plugging it in? I'm plugging it in. India. Most texts. Weston, cover your... Protect yourself. Hide under your desk. That is incorrect. I don't need to. No, <laughs> no. Um, now I will say, add the sound effect. Um, it is <laughs> China. India is second place. China has 
a little over a billion monthly texters. Um, and India is second place with 730 million. I, I was really, I, I said that uh, India is developing and they're adopting this technology fast. So I, I was really leaning into the whole like, maybe, be, maybe like they're quickly like, booming you know, and like, you know, quickly booming and would like be like, it'd be one of those surprising feats because forever throughout our lives, China has always been the biggest country, right? With the most stuff. But like right. India it has really made a push. Um, I, the population is like really close. And I don't remember what the year was. India was projected to have more people in the country than China even did. And China has a lot yep. of parts, a lot of agricultural parts in China as well. Like the further um, from the coast you get, they're a very agricultural based part of the country. So I was, I was just really trying to, I was really trying to play into that India's developing angle. I think, you know, cause I thought about that a little bit too. when I was looking at this, um, like when I was putting these questions together, and I would have thought India too for similar reasons. Um, yeah. Just because when I think, I mean, I know obviously they're both huge, like in terms of population. Right. But, but yeah, I just immediately kind of went India myself, so I definitely would have gotten that one wrong. Um, Weston, you, unfortunately, your phone won't be surviving this, but we got a couple more we can go through for the fun of it. Um, I told you all at the beginning of this episode, more or less, close to the beginning, I needed a new phone. So come on, I need that out. sponsorships. Uh, Nokia, you still making phones? I mean, hit me up. Um, it's Nokia, first of all. Just don't Nokia. forget that. I think the people over the pond call it like Nokia. They, they pronounce all their vowels weird. How about Nakaya? Now that's just bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's quit the podcast. Um, hey, Weston. Studies hey. show that texting slows our reaction time by 30% or 70%. Like, what, like... It, it didn't specify, mean, but I'm assuming just, like, reaction to just kind of basic things, like maybe, like, a response to what somebody's saying. I don't think, like, uh, somebody's okay. throwing something at you. And like, I'm imagining those, um, like those don't text and drive ads or whatever, where like if like if you answer a text and you look down to answer a text, the average time it takes you to read a text is the same time it takes you to like cover the length of a football field in your car or something like that. Yeah. So I'm gonna lean towards seventy percent because I just remember all of those like don't do it, don't text to do things. So I'm gonna lean into the seventy yeah. percent. Weston. You are correct. Yay. Yay. That, I mean... Does my, fo- does my phone slowly piece itself back together? It does not work like that, I'm afraid. Oh, no. You're going to have to get oh, a new no. phone. We better oh, reach no. out to Nokia. Oh, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But remember, it's not till the podcast ends, so I'll, we won't even know it, right? So, like, we'll have to stop recording, and then we'll know. So our listeners won't know <laughs> if you've survived <laughs> until, <laughs> until next, next time. <laughs> You can't take me down that easily. I'm a hearty. I'm a hearty man. He's a he's a hearty darty. All right, hearty darty. Whatever that means. Um, question number eight. Within each yeah. respective time zone, so just it's relative to whatever you know location somebody's in. The peak time. This is. I actually believe I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have it here, but I think this was in the U.S. So I don't think it's worldwide. But within each respective time zone, the peak time texts and st- Sorry, the peak time texts are sent and replied to between which hours of time or which windows of time? Uh, between 10.30 p.m. and 11 p.m. or between 7.30 p.m. and 8 p.m.? Oh. I thought this one was interesting. That one's interesting. I was thinking like after work, so like somewhere between like 4 and 5 or something like that. But this is more like maybe after dinner or right before bed. I don't know. I feel like I know a lot of people are like in bed before 11. Um, But I also know that the younger you are, the more texting you're doing probably because you're, you know, you're younger, you're staying up later. Maybe you're texting super duper late, but I'm going to still lean towards that. What what was that other option? 730 to eight, something like that. Yeah. 1030 to 11 or 730 to eight. I want to lean towards 7.30 to 8 because people are, like, maybe done eating and they're, like, kind of just settling in or whatever and responding to stuff. I think the, like, 11 o'clock area is, like, oh, maybe I'm just passing out to my 13th season of Netflix that I've just binged or whatever. But 7.30 to 8 feels, like, feels right. Final answer? Yeah. Weston, that is incorrect. 
It the is the most are sent and replied to between ten thirty and eleven. Sent and replied to, and the study. I can find this uh, site that links all these. Um, that has the the study also was linked to uh, a lot of unfaithful related activity happens around that time. There's a peak in that as well. They were kind of correlating those two together as well. Um, but, but the most sent like and stretch. replied to. It seems like, you know, the fact that people are, like, cheating on their, like, loved ones or something and, like, communicating with their secret lover between uh, 1030 and 11. Like, that, there would be that many people to be the most time, like, sent and replied to. That, ah, that's wild. They just added they 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 just added that correlation based off a sec like another study, but um but yeah it's between yeah. ten thirty and eleven and just and per time zone. So and I don't that was forget, folks, correlation does not equal causation. <laughs> well, the, you haven't asked my grandpa. We, well, um, do, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Excuse. <laughs> <laughs> um, Weston, we got one more for you. Unamas. I am curious about this and see what you're going to say. The it's a simple one too. It's a, it's a, it's our it's a final one. It's a stat one again. The the open rate for all text messages, sorry, the open rate for all text messages sent is over ninety nine percent. Is that true or false? False. It is true. <laughs> I know there there there. Uh, <laughs> The the thing for me was the ninety nine percent. If this was like back to your like ninety percent uh, before, I'd be like, oh okay, true. But the thing that was holding me back was like, well, how many people? How many like just busy people, lazy people, or just ADD afflicted people are just like, I have a hundred messages and I just I will never, I will just never open these. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. That's why I did ninety nine because like the 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 number um, based on that. Uh, stat was it was like 99 point like one two something or whatever so i thought this is perfect because it is that is over 99 percent so it is over 99 percent that's that's simultaneously not surprising to me because i imagine if you get something you might open it but you might not respond to it but then the thing that held me back was that that one where it's like well i, I know there are people that just don't read messages because of xyz reason and i know like if i equate it to like emails I don't read, I don't even open 99.9% of my emails. Right. I, I have, I have tens of thousands of unread emails. It's ridiculous. Cause I get everything I need from the, like the, 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 the like topic line, the about line. I'm like, I know exactly what this is and oh, I'm yeah. opening it. Well, <laughs> I, I will say this and I'm with you on that one, especially with the emails. I will say, I don't have it on here cause that's it for the questions, but I did see one that I was thinking about including that was the, um, the, the respond rate is significantly less. Like I the respond that. rate is like less than 50%. For all messages sent, there's less than like 50% responded to. Which not every message requires a response. Right. So like that, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but it's crazy that, yeah, the, the open rate, a little over 99%. That's wild. I, I'm simultaneously not surprised, but also kind of. I'm surprised that I'm not more surprised. <laughs> That's surprising, Weston. Shocking, even. <laughs> Baffling. <laughs> Astounding. Oh, Vaguely concerning. <laughs> so, as of now, everybody, Weston's phone is still intact. Unfortunately, he did not get enough questions right, so he's not necessarily safe, but maybe if he, like... You know, before we stop recording the podcast, if you just step away far enough, you should be fine. As long as we keep this so. podcast rolling, the bomb squad's supposed to be here in like two more minutes, and I'll be okay. Oh, I see. That's kind of smart. Okay, well, we'll keep yeah. it rolling. Yeah, I um, hit the panic button as soon as you told me what this game was about. You have like the little like store panic button, the little red button you <laughs> oh can press just underneath your... God. Okay, that's not going to come through on the microphone, but we just had a very loud crash of lightning, and I saw this like flash outside my oh, window. Oh, jeez. I, th- I don't think my phone's going to blow up. I think that house is going to blow up. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm just thankful that you finally had a big lightning strike, too. I've had, like, two of those on the podcast, and you've, yeah. you've come out scot-free so far. Sorry, now, I didn't now, mean though. to interrupt you, but it was just like, kapow! I'm like, oh! <laughs> no, I didn't hear it, but I trust me, you know I understand. <laughs> oh, good. Well, hey, we better wrap it up before you get caught up in a, in a nasty storm. Are you going to get hit bad? Is it, is it raining hard? 
Uh, it wasn't. My headphones are on, so I wasn't hearing anything. But I think I see my my blinds are actually closed. But I think I see some moisture dripping by the window. It's getting a little wet outside. It's getting a little wet out there. It's getting a little wet outside. Hey, Nature is a little wet. Speaking of places you can get wet, <laughs> Weston, where can people find you on the internet? <laughs> it's, it's the only don't let us down link. uh <laughs> Uh, you can find my landing page for all the things that I do at westonhasty.com. Uh, I mostly uh, just game on YouTube. Uh, go to Magic Man Mo there. If you want to get some poetry, I've, I'm at hastilymadedecision.com. Or you can just some, come say uh, hello on, the, on Twitter X at Weston Hasty. Yeah. So are you, is that what you're calling it now is Twitter X? Or is I'm going to call it whatever I want because that's what Elon does. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody, you can find me on my landing page, which is alexduquette.net. Check it out. All my stuff I do is there. All my stuff I do. I guess it did. I said that so fast, it felt like I said it wrong, but I guess it did make sense grammat- like, grammatically. But alexduquette.net. Anyway. Um, it rhymes, so you don't have to. That's the only reason why I picked .net. It's because of like alexduquette.net. So check I like me out. I do, I do music stuff. You can see my entire music disco- discography there. It's only two albums, but hey, you can check them out. Um, specifically, <sighs> check out Songs from Sangamon Street. Um, that's my first full-length album, and I'm really proud of it, so you should go listen to that. And everything else I do is there, too, um, with Profoundish. Thank you for listening wherever you're listening or viewing on YouTube. Make sure you like, you love, you... you, you <laughs> Uh, you, you know, you, you rate everything. Talk to us. Send us a message. Let us know how you feel. Tell us. Tell us your uh, your texting habits. Do you like to use emojis? Do you not? We'd love to know. Um, What's your favorite and, emoji? Ooh, that is that's a great one. Well, what is yeah. your favorite emoji? Yeah. Um, mine's the poop emoji. <laughs> because why not? I don't. I don't have a clue what my favorite emoji is. I have to open up to see what my most recent ones even are. The thing is, mine. Mine. Like, mine are kind of uh, skewed because I mainly just text Steph. So with her, like, I send, like, hearts and things. and But, like, with anybody else, I wouldn't use those, really. So that makes sense. I'm Actually, right I'm going to say my favorite, even though I never have the opportunity to use it, is the old man wizard. I was thinking the wizard for you, actually. Yeah. Um, He's actually on my Twitter. My name on Twitter is Weston with the little wizard emoji. <laughs> Not Weston my username, like the handle or whatever, but the, the my name name. Your name should be Weston with the Little Wizard. <laughs> it, it, just, just literally Weston with the Little Wizard. I love I, it. I, I feel like I might my my I might get shadow banned on Twitter if I if I do that. People will um, click on my I, profile and say this profile may contain inappropriate content, and I'll be like, oh, it doesn't though. It doesn't though. There, there'd be some fun, just, like you know Pete. Pete's out there, and he's going. I want the little wizard. Where's the little wizard? And it's just you. The little um, wizard was in us all along. My, you know, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, everybody, thank <laughs> you for listening. If there's a little wizard in you, go see a doctor. And until next time, uh, Seth. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, okay. Can, can that be the new outro? It's like, and until next time. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs>